What's up everybody, Drew right back at it again with another video. Today we're going to be talking about another update from the Ground Branch crew. This one is Intel Report number 13, October News. Let's go ahead and just hop into it. What's going on everybody? We got another Intel update for you. And this month we have news and showcases for both V1033, our next major update, as well as a little preview of something that will be coming later on, V1034 or later. Don't forget you can always get an overview of what's going on via their roadmap, which man, I have not looked at that in a while. Take a quick gander. Trailio. So I think we are. I don't even remember where we're at. Shoot. I think this is the stuff that's like been completed, right? And yeah, so this is the stuff that I think's been completed, and they're still working on all this stuff. So pretty neat. I'll have a link to this in the description if you want to take a closer look because I think they even have descriptions, right? Yeah, but moving on, recap, Ground Branch on GeForce Now. As announced in late September, Ground Branch is now available on NVIDIA's cloud gaming service GeForce Now. Again, this is a service that I haven't really tried before, but I hear that it's actually pretty good. If you aren't familiar with GeForce Now, it's basically like you get to stream the games to whatever platform you're on and you could just play it right then and there. At least I think that's how it works. I wonder how good it is with fighting games. But anyways, earlier this month, we also fixed an issue with GFN players losing keybinds, game video options and listen server configuration upon ending a play session these settings were all set to save for the steam cloud so everything is now kept safe interesting i didn't realize that was an issue but then again i haven't really played geforce now so i wouldn't know but anyways news for v1033 here's what we got this month for our upcoming major release version 1033 pistol red dots new models and stuff version 1033 will allow you to mount a mini red dot sight such as the rmr to pistols that are more fit for it at this time that includes both g19 models the mark 20 and the m17 let's take a look at this bad boy Ooh. oh wait does this have one of those things that kind of like extends the mag just a little bit because if that's the case it's kind of cool and also are they adding the ability for you to actually inspect your gun because if that's the case oh boy you're gonna see a lot of your favorite tactical channels do so many reloads for their thumbnails in this game i can already tell underneath this picture it says mark 25 equipped with the rmr mini red dot sight as teased on our twitter all right moving on here gotta be honest i don't really see their twitter all that often we also added a new mini red dot site. The Doctor 2, commissioned by Cody Cudmore, is also working on these very nice looking weapons. Let's take a look at this red dot here. Pretty nice. I don't know if it's going to be as good as it looks in the game here, but uh, can't wait to see it. As mentioned in the last update, we have also ordered an A2 style AR carry handle, as well as a brand new M16A4 model that better matches up with the AR-15, both in quality and scale. The bipod grip is also receiving a new model. Here's the screening of the stuff put together that is a gorgeous looking m16 not gonna lie although i think my biggest issue with this is when the hell are we gonna be able to use our bipods huh when is that gonna happen developers when am i gonna be able to use that bipod and prone too uh, another thing what map is this this map does not look familiar it's a new map i don't know what this is it does not look familiar to me pretty cool pretty cool all right but moving on while we're taking on popular demand we've made the smg pdw pouches into double so you can carry as much ammo as so you can carry as much ammo for them as much as you can for rifles oh cool see this is what i really like about ground branch they actually make it so that you can see what's on your belt that's kind of one thing that i hope ready or not does at some point they make it so that your grenades are like hanging off the side of your uniform and stuff that would be great so we can actually see what they have this is really cool i like this a lot but moving on here selectable shoot house layouts running the shoot house sometimes kill house on the farm is always fun but it could get stale with a fixed floor plan in version 1033 players will be able to choose between a number of different layouts five at the time of counting including the old layout last seen in version 1030s kill house training level via the target app display right next to the shootout's entrance cool so does this like change in game then or how does this work if i like flip it and then i press start does it just boop just change it that'd be kind of cool gotta be honest i don't really do the shoot house all that much i think i've maybe done it like once but i was just screwing around with a bunch of subscribers that one time but anyways underneath the picture it says prototype of the upgraded app display now has a drop down menu for you to select different layouts which are previewed on the right okay cool and then we have another picture here underneath that it, it says main room for one of the new shoot house layouts all right cool we'll continue to expand on the shoot house layouts and functionality as we progress in case you were wondering the existing layout currently in version 1032 remains as the first option okay awesome moving on server quality of life one of our tasks this update is server quality of life this mostly means a lot of little fixes and features to try to make server admins lives easier but there are also improvements to the online experience for regular players let's look at our first example the kit 
restrictions menu in the admin panel. Okay, so this is obviously not my area of expertise. I'm not too sure when it comes to, you know, server side stuff, but I imagine that this is actually really good. Taking a look at this right here. Uh, it looks like they're adding like restrictions to what people can wear if they're trying to do like PVP stuff. I guess that's pretty good. So that way, you know, people don't have to like put on their gear by themselves and try to figure out what's going on. It's just automatic when they walk in. At least that's how I assume this is. You've got blue team skins and red team skins. Yeah, so awesome. It's going to be great for those people that are trying to run a bunch of the PVP modes and stuff. But moving on here. This is being wrapped up now and should allow server admins more easily to set up restrictions for the skins that different teams can use on their kit for ease of friendly versus enemy identification. Another feature that has long been requested is a favorite server feature. Oh yes, please. The UI has been there for a while, but finally it has been rigged up. And there we go. These are all the official servers, I believe. But I am definitely going to add a couple of favorites that I usually go on for sure. Freaking finally after all this time. This feature is also tied to stream directly. Oh, cool. So you can now manage your favorite servers offline within Steam as well. Nice. Another change that has been made is to allow server admins to specify a message of the day. Text that can be displayed as usual with the admin MOTD console command with simultaneously displaying an image on the server info board via the new text tag. Changes made by admins to the message of the day or the server name or server name will also propagate immediately to all users. It's the little things. So yeah, that's pretty cool. It's definitely giving a lot of features for the people that are running all the servers. I bet that's got to be great for them. But let's move on here. Call signs. As mentioned last month, 1033 will bring call signs, short IDs, by which players may be more easily identified. Call signs are displayed as their own arm patches, though only on tops that have a Velcro patch and are limited to three alphabetical characters, A through Z and 0 through 9, which can be entirely custom within limits or use an automatically assigned team element based value, e.g. A01. If you're the first man on element alpha, the latter can be forced for all players by server admins and we've got a bit of a preview of that. Let's take a look here. Customize operator. We got Scopey here. SCO the first. Uh, oh, okay, cool. So that's how it works. So that's like the first couple of letters then I guess. Can we customize the call sign or does it just take like the first three letters of the name? I'm assuming that's what it is because it just has Sco and it doesn't look like you can edit that. Use element call sign. Oh, and it gives you the option to do that. Okay, cool. Underneath this picture, it says grayscale US flag and call sign patch is applied on compatible top. Please hoodie. Notice that the active checkbox overrides the player defined call sign SCO with an automatically assigned call sign BO5 or Blue 5 based on the player's current team element. Okay, cool. Definitely going to be a lot better for PvP matches. I'll tell you what. Various UI. Various UI elements have now been updated to include the new call sign system and as a part of the server quality of life upgrade. Server admins can do whatever player name and call sign validation they wish via a new server management mutator package into a mod. The specific format of these call signs can also be chosen by the server owner. And they have like a little picture here, the server session router, what it's going to look like. XB1, I'm assuming is the name. I'm not too sure, but it's neat little organization there. But moving on here, maps and game modes, docs, missions. All game modes are now made for the new docs map, including the most complex intel retrieval setup so far. Some more limited deathmatch areas have been created and DTAS, dynamic take and secure, should be a very interesting tactical position on this map. Let's take a look at this map. I think this is a new one, right? Or is it the one that's being remade? I'm not too sure. But man, that sure is a lot of crates right there. Freaking Battlefield 2042, eat your heart out. Pretty nice looking map, not gonna lie. Uplink should be a challenge for defenders and attackers alike. And both Terrorist Hunt and Team Elimination will of course be present. Awesome. Moving on to the next thing here, we've got Depot Overhaul. The Depot Overhaul continues and as teasers below show, it's proving to be a pretty massive one. Can you tell which areas of version 1032 version these angles correspond to? Uh, wow, there is a wow, this is completely different from what I remember. Like, it was like m a much more open area with hardly any stuff in the middle. This is pretty wild that it looks like this. Holy cow, it's like a Russian installation here. You have another picture underneath this showing like a different angle here. Man, these maps are just looking gorgeous every day. Underneath this is another picture. Yo, they even have a thing where you could actually, I wonder if you could go through here, like walk across. I don't think there was anything like that before. Very gorgeous looking pictures, not gonna lie. The updated depot will also require a game modes and acoustics update in order to account for the design changes and yeah, it certainly will there's a <laughs> 
It's n it's not even the same map. It's completely different. So much more details have been added to it. Whoever's working on the maps is doing a fantastic job. Let's just hope that the gameplay corresponds to how good it looks. And I hope that they make it so that it's well optimized because that's another issue that I've always had with this map is that it never really played that well, even in its smaller version. But uh, moving on here. Ready Room Hint. Though not directly related to level design, we have also made some updates aimed at new players with revamped hints in prominent places as well as in-world ready room hints to make things as clear as possible about where to go and what to start and what to do to start your first ground branch game okay cool and here's a picture of that we've got the locker rooms right here and we got this thing that's actually poking out i wonder if this thing's gonna keep looking at you as you're like walking back and forth imagine if it had eyes but let's read what it says here locker use the locker to change your name appearance gear and loadouts approach the locker and press f to start there's even a hold f to resupply now is that always the thing i don't remember but i like the way that these lockers look and Instead of having like the same old uh, wooden ones that we've had before. All hands are temporary and will disappear after the first few sessions. Though they can be reset under settings. Gameplay to start appearing like the first launch. Okay, cool. I mean, obviously I'm a pretty seasoned veteran at this game. So it's not even a big thing for me. But uh, for new players, it's probably going to be good. Moving on to the next thing here. We've got Hostage Rescue PvP and Terrorist Hunt Improvements. Oh, cool. While we are working on PvP Hostage Rescue game mode, we are not ignoring the PvE modes. Besides the AI improvements discussed in Intel number 11 the terrorist hunt mode is being refined with two new features that we're currently testing on some larger maps a new ai hotspot feature will be available where certain areas of the map spawn a larger than usual number of enemies providing more of a focus and a challenge the return of the bum rush feature in which the last few enemies on the map can't take it anymore and attempt to charge down the remaining players hopefully reducing the incidence of where's the last damn bot yeah that's a bit of an issue when it comes to like the last one. I'm always just running around trying to find that last one to kill him, you know? So I kind of like that idea at the very end there. Well, they kind of just charge you. That's pretty cool. Let's go ahead and move on here. Audio. As the long process of audio optimization continues, Mixin has put a little time aside to record a short preview of new gunshot tales for large interior spaces, which you can check out below. Oh, we got a video. Let's take a look, see. Let me just turn on the audio real quick. This is definitely going to make fighting inside hurt my ears, I can already tell. Moving on here. Beyond version 1033. Some features are in ongoing development that might see their beginnings well before they're ready for the public, such as the case of Friendly AI, whose first steps were teased last month, even though it's at least a couple of updates away from its initial Playboy iteration. Gotta let you know it's being worked on, right? So this month we're showcasing some of the upcoming female characters and related assets that we've been working with. How Penal? I never know how to say his name to have ready for version 1034 tentatively. Let's take a look Oh, so we got a bunch of females here girl power. Let's say we got the the first one the second one The third one the fourth one the fifth one. These are some pretty good-looking faces not gonna lie This dude sure knows how to make faces. I'll tell you what underneath this picture is another picture of the I'm assuming male and female of the clothing I think yeah, so the males are up top I think and then the females are underneath kind of looks like pretty cool We're gonna be able to wear the same same stuff pretty much it looks like or are these all female i'm not too sure anyways moving on to the next thing here we've got the female models in the chest rigs and these are the four main ones i think awesome awesome girl power as ever keep in mind that although these renders are made with game ready geometry and textures as opposed to high poly and super resolutions they do not reflect the final in-game look due to the lighting yeah so even though they look good here they're not going to be as good looking in the game as we all hope but i mean 
mean, if I'm being honest, like looking at the character models in game, they actually don't look that bad. They look fairly realistic if I'm being real. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it when it comes to Ground Branch. Some pretty decent stuff in here. Not gonna lie. Wouldn't say that it's like the biggest banger of all, but you know, they had a lot of stuff in here. Glad to see Ground Branch is always coming out with the bangers. Definitely can't wait for version 1033. Gonna be awesome. And uh, yeah, I think that's where I'm gonna end the video. Thank you all for coming out to watch and I guess I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.